Welcome everybody, Chef Casey here with the Putman Kitchen. Welcome you back to another great episode. Today we're gonna do some pan seared venison, some antelope. With that antelope, we're gonna get into a nice little pan seared local Cape Valley potato, some beautiful foraged mushrooms, some leeks, some herbs. I'm gonna do a dried cherry, kind of hibiscus jelly demi-gloss with a little bit of red wine. So first and foremost, star of the show is this antelope loin. This is a beautiful, beautiful rack of antelope. It's got great texture to it. Beautiful cut of meat. So let's get this going first. I'm not gonna do a whole lot to it. When it comes to seasoning, I'm gonna keep it very simple. I'm gonna do some forage Cape salt coming off the, the bluffs of the Cache Creek. And I'm gonna try to keep this towards the middle. So I'm gonna kind of get the most best cuts. I'll keep this towards the Chateau cut, Chateau Brion, right? I'm familiar with that terminology. Chateau is kind of like the middle. So let's go ahead and take this. You could take it at this stage now. You could take this like this. You could pan sear it as it is. Or if you wanted to, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to cut it into individual chops, pan sear it. I'm going to let it rest. I'm going to get into our veggies, get those nice and hot, herbed out, caramelized, and then I'm going to get into our sauce. If you can't get antelope, feel free to get a rack of lamb. You can look at veal, if you could find veal. You could always do a pork tenderloin. This meat is incredibly beautiful. So let's get these kind of seasoned real quick. A little bit of salt. I'll be using olive oil today to pan sear. Kind of nice smush of garlic, beautiful. As you can see, our oil is starting to kind of slide on the pan, starting to glide over. You don't want it to smoke, but you kind of right, you want it right there on that precipice of smoking, not smoking. You want it nice and hot to get that sear. Always make sure your meat you're going to sear is nice and dry. It's room temperature, it's not cold. The colder the meat is, the less reaction you're going to get on the pan, the less crust you're going to build. Hear that sizzle? That's what we want. I like to shingle them opposite, just so you can create as much space as possible. If your pan is too crowded, you're gonna to start to sweat your meat instead of searing. You're not gonna develop any crust. So you wanna make sure your meat's not touching. There's room for that air to kind of go up and evaporate out. So at this point, let's add our garlic. Careful with garlic, it burns quick. There's a lot of sugar in there. People don't realize, oh, why is my garlic burning so quick? Because garlic has a lot of sugar that comes out as soon as it hits hot oil, hot butter. A little more oil, a good measure. I'm just gonna let this sit. I'm not gonna do anything to it. I kind of want it to, I want that crust to build. I want it to form. The more you move this meat around, the more you mess with it, the less reaction you're gonna have with the pan. For this rack of venison, I would suggest a, a rare to medium rare, like a rare medium. So at this point, I'd probably do a little bit more oil. Just on the side. More for the garlic, because you want oil now to start basting. And you're gonna infuse this oil with the garlic, the rosemary, just be careful when you add herbs to hot oil, it'll pop on you. Why? Because there's a lot of moisture. There's water in those herbs that the hot oil is forcing it to come out. Beautiful crust. Looking phenomenal. As you can see, the crust building. That beautiful Maillard reaction happening. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. And we'll just start basting. You 
just trying to incorporate that all that infused oil onto your venison. So now my meat's looking pretty good. At this point in time, I kind of want to have a vessel for it. I want to be able to put it somewhere where I know it's going to be able to rest. You could use a wire rack, of course. But I'm just going to use some spoons just to help keep it aerated. Let's get our potatoes out. These are some beautiful Cape Bay Valley potatoes. Just do a quick cut. These are fingerling potatoes. So I'm gonna kind of have these just pan seared on one side. All right, beautiful hot oil, beautiful potato, olive oil potatoes, they love each other. Again, I don't want a lot in my pan. I don't want this to sweat. I don't want this to steam. I want this to kind of fry. Same kind of process with the meat, right? I don't really want to move this around. I want that reaction to happen. I want that caramelization. You can see these potatoes have absorbed a lot of that oil. That's the beauty, that's the beauty of, these, uh, of these fingerlings. They absorb. And let's go into some herbage. We could do a little bit of rosemary. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of leek. So now we're just gonna bury these potatoes with aromatics. I'm gonna come back to that garlic that we roasted off with the venison. I'm gonna chop this up. We'll add some fresh, fresh rosemary. Take a look at it, maybe a little more oil. Just to help those leeks saute. We're also gonna do some foraged mushrooms with this dish. Got some beautiful lion's mane, some cremolinis. Now with mushrooms, they're gonna to absorb too, so you gotta make sure you have enough oil in there. Bring in some lion's mane. Be careful with your leeks. Leeks will burn just like garlic. It's just a beautiful potato mushroom hash. Lots of herbs, fresh garlic. So like you said, you wanna have, let this sit for a little bit, let those mushrooms kinda of rehydrate, reconstitute. Now that we have our venison rack resting, looks beautiful. Let's dive into this cherry leek sauce. Get our pan nice and hot. We'll start sauteing some shallot, a little bit of dried cherry together. While this is getting heated up, we're gonna get our wine ready, a little bit of red wine. If you don't have red wine, you could use maybe like a port or sort some type of sherry. I'm gonna add a little bit of cherry juice. Get some sugar in there. A little bit of the red wine. Just let that reduce down. You start to smell that wine, it's really coming through. As soon as you don't smell red wine anymore, you're pretty much good to go. It should reduce by half, hopefully. Take a little salt. Looking good, I'm gonna do a little bit of beef stock. Just a tad bit. Let that simmer a couple minutes. You want this to reduce. You want this to be sort of on the thicker side, like a very, not as thick as gravy, but just a little bit less. I'm gonna add a little bit of my hibiscus marmalade. It's just a little more sugar. This will help thicken it as well. You could use a cherry jam if you like. You could use a currant jam. You could use any type of 
jam. I would stay away from like a strawberry, but blueberry, blackberry, you'd probably be okay. I'm actually gonna make a little cornstarch slurry. This cornstarch is gonna help just thicken the sauce if you're making a big batch of it. Just make sure you want this to be on the boil because it'll thicken real fast. Beautiful sauce. We can come back over to our meat. And then we can just make sure that we have the cherries, the shallots, the red wine. Nice, beautiful mixture. I'm gonna come back and garnish with some pickled, a little bit of pickled cherry. And then we can come into some chive. Very simple, extremely rustic, but there you have it. Pan seared venison, beautiful Cape Valley potatoes, foraged mushrooms, a beautiful sauce you can make at home. Thank you for joining me today at the Putwin Kitchen. Chef Casey, thank you very much.